In this video, I'm going to take you through a full process of a heat pump retrofit into a 1980s fully detached house. Probably the most common type of the property you'll find in the UK. So you'll be able to follow my thought process and decision making on this very project. The unit itself will be installed on the side of the house right here and I've got some bad experiences with the units being installed in those narrow alleyways. There's always a chance of cold air recirculating in those uh, enclosed spaces so I will not be putting the unit on the floor. It will actually go on the wall right here which is on the other side of that wall and that's our heat only boiler and a vented cylinder right up there on the platform in the garage. We also have gas meter right there and electrics here so everything in one place so that will go we're lucky because we've got 28 mil primaries here going from the boiler all the way up to the house we don't know what size they are inside the house so we have to lift some boards and have a look under the floor and if they are 28 no upgrades are needed for the pipe work that would be really lucky we also have solar and 10 kilowatt hours of battery storage looks like the boiler has had a tough life. Oh, won't cut anyone's hands anymore. One of the things we have to do with central heating is to convert it into a sealed system because it's vented right now. And right here you can see that's my feed to the system and that's the vent for the system. So those two, I'll have to cut them off. Yeah, we can try that. Ready? One, two, up. Well, let's put it up. Let's put it up. Up, 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 up. A bit higher. That's it, down. So now I have this unit one meter above the ground. And why am I doing it? The reason is I had a very similar job where we had a unit in an alleyway, slightly smaller than this one. And the other side, it wasn't a fence, it was two meters tall or 2.4 meters tall garage. And it did start microclimating in the winter. When the temperature was dropping to around zero degrees, between zero and minus three, the unit would recirculate its own cold air and it would go to defrost every 15 minutes, completely killing the unit's output. And the property temperature, instead of being 21, would drop to around 17. This situation is better, it's more open, so the unit might have worked on the floor. But I'm not gonna risk it in alleyways anymore. I'm lifting units up because cold air will naturally drop to the bottom. That should help that cold air dissipate before the unit gets a chance to recirculate it. But again, it's an experiment. We'll have to wait till the winter to see how this unit performs in this location right here. So my pipe work in the plant room is now completed and I'm ready to slide the cylinder in. On the return, we've got Wise Trainer. And you can find those Intatech, I think, and other companies also made them the ball valves with a strainer inside them, which are really easy because when you turn the uh, valve off, you can take the strainer out without draining any uh, system, any water from the system. However, I no longer use them. The pressure loss on those valves is huge. And why strainers such as this one here have a much lower pressure loss through that valve? I've also discovered why the old boiler failed. If you look at this connection from the boiler for condense, there's a stain on the wall. So not only boiler was leaking, the connection through the wall was leaking as well. And that tells me the soak away was not draining away quickly enough. Hard compacted earth. This is not a soak away. This boiler has been leaking everywhere. Condense trap, condense connection, a plastic collector of the flue inside. Probably it was flooding the combustion chamber as well. I mean, that boiler had no chances of being installed like that. We've created a new soak away. So there is a drain pipe, empty inside, drill on the sides with 10 mil drill bead. So the condense has somewhere to, uh, somewhere to go. The pipe work around the cylinder is now finished. And as you probably can see, it's piped up as a vented cylinder. So I'll just have to tag it so some poor soul that comes here after me doesn't get confused. And cap off temperature and pressure relief. Now, the pipe work. So, from the heat pump, we've got flow going to a three-port diverter, 
Plug to the cylinder. Return from the cylinder right here, going back to the unit on the last T. Those small isolating valves are just my valves for flushing on flow and return, just to make my job easier. Isolating valve on the flow, full bore 28 mil, and a strainer isolating valve on the return, Y type. And we also have a robo kit here with a feeling loop. Now, I don't have a mains water in the garage at all. So I will have to go all the way across the garage over the ceiling, go into the house and pick up a uh, mains water. There's luckily a raising main going to the loft somewhere behind that wall. What we have here is, this is our flow. This is return to the unit. And all of my pipe work just terminates right there. Main supply to fill the system, hot water, cold water that will be vented, and uh, flow and return pipe work in 28 mil. And those two pipes there is flow and return for central heating system. So that wall there is the wall to the garage and that's where the existing flow and return pipe work enters the property under the floor. Those two pipes here is flow and return. However, when they enter the, the uh, property from the garage, they are uh, immediately re reducing to 22 millimeters. So we lifted the boards in both bathrooms and it would be really difficult to replace this pipe work without causing major disruption. Because in theory you run 28 with loads of elbows, but that defeats the purpose because you're introducing pressure loss on all the elbows and, and it would be super tricky to install anyway. We've uncovered all those rooms, some of them we had to, to replace the pipe or going to radiator, some of it was kinked, some of it had to be redone. Had a look under the floor here, had a look in all the bathrooms and in the office here, and what we realized is that no upgrades to pipe work here are necessary because 22, this is where the pipe work goes into the uh, property from the garage under the bath. And it goes to 22, we can't see any 28 millimeters pipe work and it's 28 millimeters on the other side of the wall. That pipe work goes on the side of the house and never goes to the other side. And what we've noticed is that this pipe work must tee off straight behind the bath and then goes right there behind the cupboards and serves the other side of the property. Which means that we've got 28 millimeters pipe work entering the property and then it tees off to two sets of 22s and pretty much splits the house in half. So in theory, we don't need any upgrades. And we will know that immediately once we fire the unit and we see the flow rate through a central heating. If it's around 1200 liters, we are fine. Mary is finishing the condense pipe. It's just 32 mil plastic insulated in external primary pro insulation. So the same insulation we use for uh, copper primary pipe work. Now for the part of the work that everyone loves, especially apprentices, lagging, internal lagging. So for lagging, I use pipe lagger. Well, you can use any uh, miter box, it does the same thing. What's good is this little saw that's sold with those pipe laggers. It's called insulator. Insulator, yeah? And what I do, I pre-cut my miters and I glue them together before I go on the pipe work. So the pre-cut is on the back and you open the whole thing and slide it over the pipe work already pre-glued as an elbow. And for that we're using Armacell Armaflex 520 pipe lagging adhesive. On both sides you let it dry for about 30 seconds to a minute. Here you can see my insulation glued together so it looks super nice and you don't get any glue going over the insulation and you usually get glue over when you try to do it on the pipe work itself. Okay, let's put it on the pipe. And inside the property, we pretty much changed all the radiators for the same footprint. So single panel, no non-convectors or single panel, single convector into K2s, which is two panels, two convectors. So the radiators don't look much bigger, which I do find in 70s and 80s to 90s builds. You will find that you have single panel radiators very often, uh, no fins or, or single fins. And replacing them for K2s usually gets you to a very decent 
system that can run at 40 degrees C flow temperature, so 37 and a half mean water temperature. And that allows over 400% seasonal efficiency of the system, which is guaranteed to be cheaper than the most efficient gas boiler if installed in a certain way. No third party controls, hopefully no buffers, uh, no zoning and fully weather compensated. As soon as you try to do clever things, zone the system, put third party controls, yeah, you're gonna kill the efficiency and you're gonna have pretty expensive and probably unreliable system in your house. The electrician is about to finish his work, so be very close to firing it up and testing it. Very exciting. Yeah? Good. Excited? <laughs> Everyone's very excited. Time to commission the system. The circulator in the unit outside is running, switching between heating and hot water, and I'm gonna go around the system and bleed all the radiators and top up the system as required. So now I've got the unit running and it's whisper quiet. Look, I'm just next to the unit, holding my hand on the fan. Oh, it's a nice cool breeze coming out of it. And yeah, absolutely no noise. Those new Valent units are not only whisper quiet, I have no problems installing them on the walls or on the roofs because there's literally no vibrations on them whatsoever. You touch the mounting feet, you touch the bracket, zero vibration, not light vibration, absolutely none. That's why I also question the need for using flexible hoses anymore. I think those units can be easily hard piped with no issues whatsoever, no noise transfer to the system. I think the days of noisy heat pumps seem to be gone right now with those modern units. I need to get at least 1200 liters through this system on heating and preferably on the pump not running flat out because we never got to where the heating tees into two sections of the house. I just assumed it tees from 28 to 222 primaries for a house because that's what I could find. 28 going in the house from the garage and then two sets of 22s, but I never found the T. So let's have a look. So with the pump set to maximum speed, I'm getting 1500 liters per hour. So I can swap the pump back to auto setting and I know this system is fine for my heat pump. And also I know that the pressure loss is not a problem because the pump can easily not only overcome the pressure loss of the system but also overshoot it by a margin of around 20%. So we should have nice efficient system here with actually no upgrades to the pipe work required whatsoever. I changed the setting of the main pump to an auto setting so the uh, system makes the decision at what power or speed to run the pump and it seems to have settled at around 1200 liters so we are in the correct ballpark for our flow rates on this system which is an excellent news so now i'm running around the house testing flow and return temperatures on radiators to see if i'm getting circulation first of all and secondly if i'm getting too much flow that would be a really narrow delta t or not enough flow that would be a really wide delta t and by doing that i'm not looking for perfection and i'm not looking for delta t5 on every radiator i'm looking for comparable temperatures on the return of the radiator and dt between three and seven anything within that ballpark is probably acceptable and those uh, smart probes are excellent they are super accurate. I find them much better than uh, wired clamps that go to your uh, gas analyzer. They're really not that accurate because the sensor on the probe is tiny. On those uh, Testo smart probes, the sensor is very large, has good contact with the pipe work, and seems to be very accurate. So we are in the lounge, 5.4K DT. That is perfect. Let's address some comments that I get under my videos a lot. First one is that heat pumps only work in modern, new-built, well-insulated properties. After one season of having around 10 heat pumps working in all types of homes, I can definitely tell you that it's untrue. They work in all types of homes, even uninsulated period properties with no problems and high efficiencies and they keep people in them happy and warm. Another comment that we get a lot is who has space for this kit? It takes so much more space. As you can see in this case, uh, it takes actually less space inside because there used to be a boiler here where the cylinder is and a 
cylinder, old one was above there on the platform. Uh, there's no cylinder on the platform anymore, the boiler is gone and it was replaced just with the cylinder inside. It is a bigger cylinder because uh, it will store more water, but space-wise this setup really takes no more space than the regular cylinder that a lot of homes still have. So as long as the property uh, has a boiler inside and has an existing cylinder, usually you should be able to remove the boiler, remove the cylinder and use exactly the same amount of space to install the kit needed for a heat pump. When it comes to radiators, a lot of people are saying that unless you've got a super insulated property, which has to be a new build, you will need gigantic radiators that will look out of place. So we are in a very typical property that's not super insulated. It has some cavity wall insulation and upgraded insulation to the loft, no insulation to the concrete slab and regular UPVC windows. And we have regular size radiators. We got no triple radiators in this property. We installed K2 type radiators throughout. Same footprint as the radiators they replaced. They don't look out of place. They're not gigantic. And also they are big enough to run this setup at 45 degree maximum flow temperature, which will provide around 400% efficiency. So super efficient and cheap to run setup without gigantic radiators and without tons of insulation required. Another comment that uh, happens a lot is I don't have space for big ugly units externally. I don't want to make my garden look ugly side of the house this is actually where uh, the beans are so if you've got a space to keep your beans beans aren't beautiful you probably will find a space for a unit of the size of two beans I would say now back to you guys tell me what you think about this installation does it persuade you that it's actually possible to install a heat pump in a property where it doesn't take more space when it doesn't look ugly or you don't need huge radiators if you've got other concerns or if you've got any questions about this installation, yeah, go to the comment sections and yeah, go on. I'll try to reply to all the comments you guys post, apart for silly ones. Although if they're funny and silly, then yeah, I will reply as well.